I've been researching this since we drew this tag in February. Okay. And this tells me this is the best spot. You can see there's lots of other public land. Getting right. to yeah. it is going to be hard. We have to start someplace, you yeah. know. I mean, what else perfect. do you do? We don't want to bring too much meat because we're counting on tenderloins. No guides, no outfitters, no baiting, no high fences and no high dollar lodges. This is real hunting here, a true on your own adventure in the lands first preserved for us by the great Teddy Roosevelt. Randy Newberg is your average hunter. He has a job, he has family responsibilities, and he loves to break away and hunt. He's one of you, the one who knows the outfitted hunts featured on those other hunting shows are afforded to only a small minority of hunters. Randy's on a quest to bring you the true hunting experience, the tough way the way that over 90% of American real hunters do it. It's reality at its finest. Hardcore, no shortcuts, hunting boiled down to the main essentials. Man against man, man against nature, and man ultimately against himself. Randy is hunting with his uncle, Larry Stickler. They have a family pack to get together at least once a year on a hunt. This time, both of them have an elk tag for the same area. They'll stick to the public lands in north central Wyoming using the on your own tactics they know best. That's the camping spot. Okay. And from there. Coming out west to hunt on your own, you need to be a map reader. You can learn to read maps at home whether you live in Montana or whether you live in Pennsylvania. That is a critical part of defining where you're gonna hunt. Wow, Larry, I think we hit the jackpot on this spot. I believe so, man. This is beautiful. Let's just look at that timber over there. You know, these elk are going to be coming down these draws and then up into the timber. One of the great things about hunting in North America is that it is a pursuit of the common man. There's no other place in the world where we have quote unquote public hunters. No place where we have vast tracts of wild land with wild animals where the man of common means can come and hunt without restriction, without paying a huge fee. Because we're on the crest of this ridge and if that wind comes screaming, we need these looks trees right. for protection, so. Looks right to me, right here. I say we go right there. Hopefully we didn't forget any components. Your long end yep. goes in just like that. When you come out west to do an on your own hunt, you want the best tent you can find. The Colorado tent from Denver Tent is that best tent. They've been here since 1890. They make the highest quality tents I know of, and they make them right here in the United States. The quality of this tent is a reflection of the people who build it. The average employee at Denver Tent has 25 years experience. They're hunters, they're sportsmen, they know what we're looking for in a tent. From my experience spending many, many nights in a wall tent, I can tell you a quality tent when I see one. And I've never seen a better quality tent than the Colorado tent made by Denver Tent Company. Wyoming kind of has the, the stepchild reputation for its elk hunting. It, it doesn't have the glamour of Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, Nevada. It's got some unbelievable elk hunting. Here's tomorrow. Would you shoot that biggest one? Biggest one I'd take. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to get a little closer, but he looks pretty good. But I'm not sure. Uh, okay. I, wait, uh, I we can hold. solve that problem by this. I promise you, if I see him tomorrow, I'll shoot okay. him. Then, then I don't want to put you in a dilemma. Long grunt to get in here, but I think we're going to have it to ourselves. So, Well, I'm going to flip the coin, and the winner gets to pick if he's shooting first or second. There you go. That's fair. Heads. Ooh, I got to shoot first. There we go. <laughs> If we all could pick, we'd all want to hunt elk in the rut with a rifle, but that doesn't happen very often. Rutting elk are so much easier to hunt. They're so much more vulnerable because they're active and vocal. After the rut, 
it's a it's a cat and mouse game. What are they doing? You got to go and anticipate what they're doing. You can't rely on vocal sounds. Hunting elk in the rut and hunting elk out of the rut are almost like hunting two different animals. In this hunt, we're hunting the very tail end of the rut, almost out of the rut. And we had to gear our minds for this completely different set of behaviors and plan accordingly. I don't know what you do about that. We're on public land. There's about 40 elk over there. Nothing you can do. There's two hunters below us. There's 10 hunters to the right of us. Last night when we scouted here, we were the only people in here. We had a bull come right up out of this bottom and look at us at 100 yards. Had another hunter walk up behind us. And off he went. Oh well. The good part would be as if these other hunters go up that ridge and bust them up. I'm thinking they would come right down to us. Ooh, there's a big wide bull with them. Holy cow, there. Just, let's see what they do. If those guys spook them, there is a big bull in there. Uh-oh, they're, they're, they're scattering. They're coming this way. Get ready, Larry. Oh, wait. Oh, here he comes. Get ready, get ready. Oh. Get your gripe ready. See, I'll tell you, he's coming this way over here. Well, he is wide. There he comes. Come. Take him or what? Do you want him or not? He's got to come through. He's, he's 170 yards away. Hold on. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Hold on. There he comes. Just wait, he's coming up. Oh, yeah. We don't want him to jump that grazing fence because it's steep down there. Here we go. You oh, ready? I'm ready. Take okay. him when you're ready. Right there. Ooh. Holy cow, oh, you he got him. I don't see he's it. down. You <laughs> drilled him. He's laying right there. Is he? He's dead right there. <laughs> I've been on guided hunts, but most of my hunts are on my own. <laughs> All I can say is, if you haven't done it on your own hunt, do one. You're gonna get the fullness of all the other aspects that a guide or outfitter takes care of that add a whole lot more to your hunt. How's that for a public land bull, huh? <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> wow. <sighs> if he would've got over that fence, he would've run right down in that hole and we would've had to chase him down there. We'd never caught up to him. No chance. Never. When I cow called him and he came up, you had about one second, yeah. and he was right there in that low spot in the fence. He was going to hurdle that, and we would have. I mean, there's no way we could catch him. He'd run down the. Well, look how long he he Took came him. over here in less than a minute. Yeah. On a dead run, I was surprised when you cow called him that he stopped and he, said, "Hey." He stopped right here and he walked yeah, he right walked up right. along the yeah, fence. I know. The odds of harvesting a bull on a public land hunt in Wyoming are about one in three which is unbelievable compared to a lot of other states. A lot of other states, those odds are one in 10, one in eight. Here it's about one in three. Do it, come and do it. I classify this as a trophy on public land. We went out here, we didn't have a, didn't know a soul or where we were gonna hunt. Last night it looked like we had it all to ourselves. Show up this morning, we had five guys had it right exactly where we were gonna go. And we still come out of it with a bull. Can't beat that. Four hours of hard work later. <laughs> yeah. This is what we live for. I know. I don't know about these hills though. If he would have made it over that fence and you would have shot him, you'd be carrying him yourself out of that hole. I'd have sold him to somebody. <laughs> I can see this is going to be tough hauling. <laughs> with you, I can't imagine. We'll just take it. We got time, so we're gonna have to. Cause I'm about shot. Yeah. We're just about there. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Half a mile. A guy with weak knees would want to have a brace in this country. Ah! Woo! I see a car. Hey. Oh my God. Heaven, heaven, just a. A few steps away. Thanks for not leaving me down there. I wouldn't leave you. I don't know what I'd do with you, but I wouldn't leave you.
That game warden said by Friday night, tomorrow night, there could be 20 inches of snow in here. Here? Here. Oh. And if it is, we, there's no way we can get out of here. You could easily let your mind bring you down when you have to break camp and reset camp and move and change your plans and strategy. But that's part of hunting, whether it's elk hunting, when you're at home whitetail hunting, guess what? Things change. Out here, things change. Because it's an hour drive minimum just to get yeah. to the nearest road. And all reports are that even the nearest road is impassable when wet. You know, Larry, if we were guided, the guide could take care of all this. It's snowing now. The game warden's trying to get everybody out of here. And I don't know if he's just making it sound worse than it is, but they're saying 12 to 20 inches of snow in the next 24 hours and can't take the chance. We got to get out of here now. Wow, look at these snowflakes. I think six inches might be out of the realm. It might be eight or 10. This might go down in history. Larry is the shortest elk hunt on record that had success. I would agree with that, with success. Giddy up, go, Daddy. Giddy up, go. Let's get out of here. Holy. Right there, Larry. If, if these elk keep moving into this spot, you know, off these little ridges here, that, point, that yeah. private land pressure is pushing them right by there. Yeah. If we can get them to just come yeah, 100 yards. It through. seems easy on this map. <laughs> the snowstorm causes a change in plans and a change in location. With one elk down and one tag to fill, Randy and Larry are lucky enough to find a small island of public land that's completely surrounded by outfitted private ranches. If their plan works, they'll have elk coming into their setup from the outer hunting pressure. They're within 100 yards of that fence and they're coming right to us. It's looking like they're coming this way. That ranch, it has guided hunting. Uh -huh. Their hunters must be pushing, pushing them this way. I think you're right. Something's pushing that many bulls this way. I'm so cold, I can't hang in here much longer. I agree. And in this wind, they can't hear me calling. I think we go down and around and get as close as we can without them smelling us right. and give it a try. Yeah, I'm best. Freezing out. We've been here two hours now. <sighs> oh, my, my gloves are so wet, it's warmer without them. <sighs> oh, 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 watch it. Wow, wow. Oh. It's supposed to get worse today, yeah. if that's possible. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. I don't think we'd have to be amphibious right now to keep warm. But we'll just stay here till we can't stand it anymore. He's right up against the fence right now, and his cows are kind of coming this way. He's getting a lot closer. Those cows can jump the fence, I'm sure he will. If, they do, if those cows jump the fence, he's coming with them and we'll get him. We got one little coulee right here that's not much of cover. It's the only place we can be where we're at this corner where they're crossing and we're exposed. But when you only have 40 acres to work with, you got to take what you're given. I think he's just testing our demeanor. <laughs> he's, he's maxing it out. Look at, that. Look at it right there on the horizon. There's two more really small rhinos. Oh, yeah. Moving to the east. I think, Larry, oh, we got two minutes of shooting light left. They're going the other way. I didn't say we get out of here and we come back in the morning. I, I can't take much more. No problem about with you. me. I'm ready to hit it. Yeah, I'm froze up. 
Looks like the weatherman knew what he was talking about. Oh, it don't look good. It looks cold out there. You got your mucklucks on, Larry? Yeah, but uh, I, I don't know if that's being prepared enough. I think we got maybe two or three inches, Larry, but it looks I bet like up it. in that mountain where we were camped, there's a foot or two. I'll bet you there's at least a foot. Right now my thermometer says 21 degrees. And dropping. And I bet you that wind is blowing 40 or 50 miles an hour. I've, I've got five bulls within 400 yards of some public land here and sooner or later they're going to have reason to come in here and feed or eat and I'm going to be there. I'm just going to stick it out, stick it out and you know like everybody else I got a job and I'll have to be back to work but I'm going to stick just stay here till the bitter end. See what ends up happening. There he, there he is. is he? He's walking to our left. Exactly the direction I don't want him to go. Oh, he's a dandy. Two bulls. Look Two at bulls. Wow. Holy cow, where did they come from? Oh my God. Why would two bulls put up with each other yeah. with a hot cow? Usually one or the other wants to be the dominant. Man, look at the horns on him. He's back on time. They got two cows in there Jeez. and two bulls. We got to hustle right now. Anyone who has hunted a lot knows what I'm going through right now. Larry and I have been out here and it is miserable. We've been freezing our ass off. And that's, that's hunting, but we're going to keep after it. Mentally, you want to quit. You want to just stop and say, I'm going to go home and watch a football game. I ain't doing that. I'm going to stay here until I can't take it anymore. Larry, Larry. He's coming. Hundred and twenty two yards. <laughs> he stood right there looking at us. <laughs> we just called in a bull within 122 yards, but I couldn't shoot him. He was standing on the fence line between public and private, and he's standing on the private side. I had to let him go. As hard as that is to hunt for five days, work that hard, endure these miserable conditions, I, it's just the code of ethic that hunters have to have. You have to respect private property. So that bull is still running around out there. Wyoming got the best of us today. Ooh, yeah. We'll get him next time. Yeah, hopefully. Well, it's been a great trip going oh, yeah. To take the shot or not take the shot, for ethical, on-your-own hunters, the decision is made by three strands of barbed wire. Yet it's the hunt itself and pride of accomplishment that makes it all worthwhile. 
braving the extreme cold, high arctic winds, driving snow, and all of the challenges of hunting on public land. Hunting on your own becomes the trophy itself. And the best part of any on your own adventure is it's completely accessible and completely achievable by you, the real American hunter.